Do you want to go from informing your meeting attendees of recording to requiring their consent to proceed? In this video, I'm going to show you how to get explicit recording consent set up in Microsoft Teams. Consider how and when it impacts the experience of your meetings. And think about what other factors should be on your radar if you're looking to enhance your process of dealing with meeting participant data something that in the age of AI-based meeting analysis is becoming more important every single day. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick. I help smaller businesses to achieve more using AI, and I specialize in Microsoft 365 Copilot and the AI tools that are part of Microsoft's platform. If what you see in this video is useful to you, it would be great if you could give it a like, drop a comment below letting me know what helped you the most, and consider subscribing so that you can see more like this in the future. And if you need more direct help with your organization's co-pilot adoption or other AI project, consider reaching out to learn how I can help. Information on this is down in the description. Microsoft Teams has three main scenarios where participants in meetings will receive some kind of alert about their contributions being processed or recorded. The first two are straightforward. When either recording or transcription gets turned on, a record of that meeting gets created and users get alerted in their Teams meeting window. This is essentially a soft alert. It appears on the screen until you dismiss it. But if you never do, or maybe you've turned on your camera or microphone and you're not even looking at the screen, your contributions will get captured whether you've acknowledged this setting or not. The third scenario is a little more complicated to understand, but is really relevant right now as Microsoft is changing some of the defaults in Teams where this will spring up more often in the future. Right now, for most meetings, if you try to enable Copilot, the meeting settings are set up for Copilot use during and after the meeting. For Copilot to work after the meeting, there must be a transcript, and therefore, when you enable Copilot, you also must turn transcription on. This leads to the same notification arrangement we just saw, where participants are told that transcription is happening. With this setting, you can use Copilot during the meeting and also afterwards based on the transcript that was saved. However, there is also another option for Copilot, and Microsoft has announced that this is now going to move to the default unless you set meeting policies differently. And that's for Copilot during the meeting only. If that setting is the one applied to your meeting, then Copilot can be activated without transcription enabled, but only within the scope of the meeting. You can ask Copilot for help on the meeting content, but the option to use Copilot vanishes after the meeting concludes. In this case, you see a very different notification as a participant in the meeting. Understanding this difference between during and after and only during for Copilot enablement is important. And while the alert message that pops up does offer some insight, we can dig a little deeper. Obviously, Copilot needs some record to be able to work. It can't just magically know what has been said without it being tracked somewhere. So when you turn on Copilot without any associated transcription, a transcript does actually get created. It's just not created somewhere users have access to, and it isn't retained after the meeting. But this ephemeral transcript does exist, and for the purposes of using Copilot during the meeting, it works exactly the same as the normal transcription. This means that if you turn Copilot on, every other user of Copilot in that meeting, or who joins the meeting later, can utilize this ephemeral record to find out about the meeting content. Your interactions with Copilot are indeed your own, but in this context, the grounding sorts for those interactions are common to every Copilot user in that meeting. So for all intents and purposes, you must think about this ephemeral transcript in much the same way you'd think about any transcript in terms of having other people's eyes on what you or others said. Now, as I mentioned, this default is changing, so we're going to see a lot more of this transcriptless Copilot use popping up. So it's really important that users understand what's going on to ensure they're not compromised. So one way we can make this clearer is to ensure we get explicit consent any time one of these features gets used. The experience of this is that instead of getting a soft notification, you get a hard stop, where until you agree, you just cannot participate in the meeting. No video, no microphone, and no content sharing. In my opinion, this could be stronger, 
There could be an agreement checkbox or an OK button that must be used, but for now at least this is as explicit as we can get. This doesn't entirely remove the need to otherwise inform your participants about how you intend to use the information you collect, but it does at least create an affirmative opportunity to explicitly consent to that collection before it happens. This feature is controlled on a meeting policy basis, meaning that you can assign this requirement to some team members and not others, but we cannot set it on a meeting by meeting basis. The setting will follow the organiser rather than the person who starts a recording or transcript, as it's the organiser who owns that asset. In the Teams Admin Centre, you need to be a Teams Admin for this, you're going to head down to Meeting Policies. Depending on how you've got things set up, you might want to change this setting in the Global Policy or in specific policies that apply to some users. Either way, open your Target Policy and scroll down to the Recording and Transcription setting. Then turn on the option Require Participant Agreement for Recording, Transcription and Copilot. Then save your update. These changes will take some time to sync, but once they do, all users with meetings that apply to that policy will have this new experience for all participants. After this sync occurs, these new settings will apply to all meetings, even ones set up prior to the change, as meeting policies are assessed when a meeting takes place, rather than when they're created. One of the important things you should consider is where does that link to a privacy policy that's displayed on these notifications actually go? It's all very well having your participants consent to recording, but unless you tell them what you're going to do with that data, remember that in the context of a business or enterprise Microsoft 365 tenant, you own the data, not Microsoft. They may be giving consent, but they are not necessarily able to give informed consent. You need to host your privacy policy somewhere where all your participants, whether internal or external, can access it in a browser. And once you've got an appropriate link, you can update the privacy and security link that is part of your invite setup in your team's meeting policies. Remember that because this is policy based, you are making a change to this policy and the associated users rather than org wide. If you want a fallback for any privacy link, then you can do that by heading to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, going to Org Settings under Settings, selecting Security and Privacy, and updating the information under Privacy Profile. So that deals with Teams, but one of the biggest issues we run into when it comes to recording consent or organizational ownership of meeting assets isn't always one that lives within Teams or in Microsoft 365. There are any number of providers out there that offer generalized meeting transcription, recording or summary services and do so on the basis of having a shadow user that's essentially an AI agent that joins meetings with you or on your behalf. They generally do not ask for explicit consent and often it's unclear exactly what's going on. Just recently, one of the names you're probably familiar with in this space, Otter AI, has been in the news after allegedly using content obtained in meetings where the recording agent entered to train their AI models without user consent. These tools offer great utility to their users, but for everyone and every organization that hasn't opted to share their information with them, they are kind of a big liability in my opinion. So if you've got your team's meeting zipped up tight, knowing that participants must explicitly consent to be able to participate in recorded meetings, is there any way to ensure this control isn't broken by one of these third party apps? There is a long answer which we'll get to, but the short answer which I've come to in researching this topic is that many Microsoft 365 or Teams admins are frustrated that these services appear to be a little too eager to meet their customers' needs by trying really, really hard to enter some of these meetings. Teams is designed to be fairly permissive about who can enter a meeting, and the who of an external tenant or a different service entirely is 100% on that third party. So even if you don't allow something like Otter as an app in your tenant, the tenant you're connecting with might, and so their organisation might have consented to that service seeing the meeting information required to join your meeting. Even if you are hosting the meeting and you have specific policies around recorded content, there is really no foolproof way around this issue other than a combination both of team settings and of user training, unless that is you just want to set up teams to admit no outside individuals at all. In meeting settings, you have two really important controls. 
First, you have control over who can bypass the lobby. If you set this to only people in your org or only organizers and co-organizers, then you can be 100% sure that no outside bot can get past the lobby without further action. On top of this, you can also further restrict who can admit users from the lobby. But be careful with these settings. If a meeting is too locked down and the organizer suddenly can't attend, then you could end up with a situation where no one can actually get into the team's meeting. However, even if you lock down these settings, you need to ensure your team members understand concerns about these meeting helper bots, under what circumstances they are or are not acceptable, and have some perspective around the specific data risks that arise because of their use. This is one of those issues where having teams set up in a way that makes it practical for what we tend to use it for means that it cannot be entirely knocked down by technology against this risk. Your users need to be on guard too. One thing you might also consider, depending on who you meet with, is how control of meeting data is handled under the agreements you have in place with vendors or customers. I'm not a lawyer, so I can't provide legal advice, but I'm certainly seeing more of these types of risks being dealt with up front when starting to work with clients. And in this case, that means there's technology, training and policy or agreements in place to mitigate these problems. You know what that sounds like? an effective governance approach. The importance of the content of meetings has skyrocketed, in my opinion, because of AI. The types of insights we can gain by aggregating meeting data across projects or teams is amazing. But we must be respectful of participants and in alignment with our duties to safeguard data and to use AI responsibly. Building an effective approach to managing this risk by gaining consent from users in teams is a big part of getting this right. What other factors are you considering around this issue? And how do you approach it in your organization? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.